Hi there, my name's Jamie Bradley and I'm a developer from the northeast of England in the United Kingdom. Today I'm here to talk to you about how I manage diabetes with Jamstack. If you'd like to ask any questions outside of the talk then please feel free to catch me on Twitter at jamiebradley234 and you can also find my website which is at jamiebradley.dev. So first we're going to talk about what diabetes is. We're not going to spend too long talking about this because um, we don't have a lot of time. <laughs> uh, but what I would like you to do uh, if you want to find out more information is please check out my post on, on my website and the link is below there. So diabetes is a lifelong condition that causes a person's blood sugar level to become too high. And diabetes is categorized into two groups. I personally suffer from type 1 diabetes and this means that my body is unable to create a hormone called insulin. Insulin is a hormone that we need to regulate blood sugar levels inside of our bloodstream. Type 2 diabetics are able to create some insulin, but not enough in comparison to a healthier individual. If we don't have insulin and our blood sugar levels become too high, then we can get really ill. And this means that we can get something called ketone acidosis or ketones, and it's effectively a poison in your blood, and it's not a very nice thing. So how do we treat type 1 diabetes? How do we keep the blood sugars regulated? Well, we do this with a comparison of testing and taking medication. What you can see here on these pictures, on the main picture on the left-hand side, a person is injecting insulin into their body with an, with an injection, and we call this an insulin pen. On the bottom right-hand side, that individual has a machine like what I have, and this is called an insulin pump. It's basically a machine that gradually uh, injects insulin into my body just via a machine rather than a physical injection. This person also has something called a continuous glucose monitor, and I'm not sure if you can see it, but I have a lot of pink tape here to keep it down, um, but I have a continuous glucose monitor as well. And what's happening is this machine is continuously checking my blood sugar levels and sending it over to this machine via Bluetooth. The machine is then capable of taking those results and adjusting my insulin levels accordingly in the background. When we eat, regardless of whether we're taking injection pens or we're on a machine like this, we need to get an accurate blood sugar reading, and we do this with a blood sugar test. So on the picture on the top right-hand side of the screen, you can see that this is the machine that we would use to, to test blood sugars. Uh, individual would prick their fingers, get the blood, and put it onto the strip. The machine would then read the, the readings. And we then have to work out how much insulin we need to take based off that reading and based on the amount of carbohydrates that we're about to eat um, in order to understand how much insulin we need. Now, treatment uh, for diabetes is improved by looking at test results from our blood sugar test, spotting trends and making changes. Now, I've kind of alluded to the fact that my machine is, is already doing this, but once upon a time, I never had access to that technology. Um, and a lot of people across the world don't have access to that technology. So they would have to do it manually. And we can do that with a handful of tools. You know, there are apps out there um, on Apple App Store, uh, Google Play Store, but some of them require in-app purchases to get premium features, and that kind of sucks a little bit. Um, it would be nice if there was a maybe an open source system where we could uh, come together as a community and, and put together features that we really need and a system that we know will really work for us. There's the technology available to us that I've already talked about, which costs a lot of money. So this machine here itself costs three thousand uh, pounds or three thousand, you know, uh, British pounds, and the the monitor that I was talking about, this little transmitter, is five hundred pounds. Very expensive, especially if you, um, you know, uh, unable to get the funding in the UK, or you know, you don't have a national health service. The other alternative is to go back to basics, which is what they told us to do 16 years ago, which was to have a logbook where you would write down your results in a table and then look at them, which I found really hard. I quite like the idea of having a graph in front of me. So at the start of this year, I decided to take on a challenge. I wanted to develop a community-driven blood sugar management application because there isn't one there at the moment, as far as I'm aware. And I wanted it to meet the following criteria. I wanted to avoid these in-app purchases. I wanted to avoid these you know, uh, premium features. I just wanted to create an application that I knew would work for other diabetics and it would give an opportunity for diabetics to come forward and contribute to the application. The application needed to be easy to host and deploy and I want you to think of the experience as the one-click installers for WordPress that you get on certain hosts. You just click the button and it's deployed and it works. It needs to be secure and it needs to be fast. And of course, I turn to my good friend, the Jamstack. Because Jamstack websites allow us to develop websites and web applications that are fast, secure, easy to host, and scalable as well. So 
this slide kind of gives you a high level idea of how this is going to work and we'll start by talking about the tooling we're going to use sanity um, as the data management platform now a lot of people tend to use sanity as a content management system but sanity is so flexible that you can create all kinds of different applications with it and um, as we've proven here <laughs> we're able to create a blood sugar management application through it sanity will give us the interface for the diabetics to go in and input their results it will also take care of managing the data and st uh, storing the data as well for us. We're going to create a theme on Gatsby um, and use that as the front end of our website. This means that if we need to make changes and then release it to the, you know, to, to the, to the user base, then users can acquire updates by doing a, a yarn upgrade or, or an npm upgrade, um, and then the dependency will just get updated accordingly, which is really seamless and easy. Likewise, on the sanity side, we'll do the same thing for the schema. We'll create a sanity plugin that will host on npm, and then once we make changes and, and release them, people can just perform the necessary command to get hold of those changes. We're also going to host the website on Netlify. We'll also consider other alternatives as well. But to start with, I decided that I wanted to go with Netlify because it's the one I'm most comfortable with and the one that I've worked with the most. In terms of getting the deployment together, so we talked about this one-click installation method before. Um, we're going to look at the idea of incorporating the, um, incorporating the website with uh, a Netlify deploy button. Uh, on the GitHub's README file, and then I'm also in the process of putting together a template for Sanity's Create tool, which means that you could go to Sanity.io Create um, and basically pick the template from a list, and it would distribute the application accordingly for you. So this gives us a wide range of benefits, you know, doing it this way. It means that we have an application that's easy to deploy and host through those one-click installers. Um, it's easy to manage because we can use the upgrade commands from our appropriate packages, uh, package managers. Sorry, um, It's going to be open source, so it means that the community can come together and put ideas forward and make contributions. The application will be easy to use. It would be easy to uh, customize. It will be secure, it will be fast, and then if we move away from the technical aspects of it, this means that we will have an application that we can host on the internet, and it will be easy to share this data with healthcare professionals. This is brilliant. It means that we don't have to sit there and you know show um, the data through a mobile phone application or pull out the book and start going through all of the different pages. We can say to our doctors, go to this link and filter down this data, and that's the this is where I'm having the problem. And that means that it's easy to visualize the data and spot the trends, which makes a big difference to the way that individuals manage their diabetes. And of course, it's been built built by a diabetic and hopefully more diabetics for diabetics so you you know people who are behind it understand the problems that diabetics are facing now this application is called hey sugar and if you'd like to find out more information about the application you can go to the website which is heysugar.health and the next few slides here i'm just going to show you some screenshots of of the application this is um typically what the dashboard would look like um the idea is that it will show uh, results from the, the the last 30 days and it will give you an average blood sugar sugar so you can see what your average um, blood sugar is going to be over the last 30 days it's very similar to the functionality that we get with this machine here we can also see how many of the results were classed as hyper which is a high reading and we can also see how many results were classed as hypo which is a low reading finally the table below will show a list of all of the readings from from the last 30 days and eventually we will be able to give users the ability to switch that between a table view and a graph view Moving on to the sanity side of things, we've given users the ability to configure the application through a settings panel. Here you can see that uh, this is where users would go to change their measurement unit because it differs between uh, different countries in the, in, in, across the globe. You can also set a high limit, which is the hyper limit, and you can set a low limit, which is the hypo limit. I've also created this idea of a food bank. So if you've ever used something like MyFitnessPal, you will know that you can create a bank of foods so that instead of having to manually input all of the information over and over again, you can just reference a particular food from there. And I wanted to bring that functionality into the application. Using Sanity's reference fields in the schema design, we're able to do that quite easily. Next, this is the reading screen. So this is the screen where a user would come into to put in their blood sugars. You can see that they'll be able to put the reading in, the time and the date it was logged. They can say how they fe felt at the time of doing the test because that makes a big difference on your blood sugars. And they can say whether they were taking the test before a meal, after a meal, or, or neither. Another important factor is the alcohol flag because alcohol plays a big 
uh, part in uh, an individual's blood sugar as well. So the final screen that I wanted to show you is this uh, result screen. So this is the screen that users would be able to go into to see an individual result. And you can see in the bottom left hand side, this is where the alcohol flag would appear if they tick the flag. And that takes me bang on to the 10 minute mark. So thank you very much for coming along and listening to my talk. Again, I'm on Twitter at jerrybradley234 if you'd like to find uh, speak to me about any of this and also uh, head over to heysugar.health for more information on the project. Thank you very much.